start by saying uh, a very big thank you to the organizers for having me and for having all these beautiful people here to present uh, today. Uh, as we all know, I'll be talking about uh, Brazil, which is a passion for me. I'll be talking on uh, from religious identity to political empowerment, the economy of tombamentos in Afro-Brazilian candomblé terreiro communities. But before I go on, like a good child I have, I wouldn't want my mother to pull my ears. So I will want to do things the proper way. As in Yoruba we say, Kashi bimoti she, kuni bari, bitiri. Let us do it the way the ancestors do it, so that it will be the way the ancestors want it to be. So I want to uh, pay homage to Ile Ogere. I want to pay homage to all the powers spiritual and physical too that are here present. I want to pay homage to all the Yas and all the Babas that are here. And I pray homage to my own Iya and my own Baba that have given me life. Uh, most of all, I want to pay homage to Oshun Shegese, You can see, well, uh, I am Omidire, and the Omi is the Omi Oshun. It's the water of Oshun that flows here, there, there, here, and so we dance. Our mother is the dancing mother. So I, I want to crave your indulgence to uh, quickly uh, now that mother has permitted, I can now close myself because in Yoruba we say, in your last of me, that is, my brethren, my people, have my clothes. And when Oshun permits, then you have many more clothes. Mm -hmm. You may be wondering, why is it that we Yorubas use so many layers of clothing? Mm -hmm. Because we live in, in a relatively uh, tropical environment, we are actually, the, 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 the best idea is to use less clothing. <laughs> but we actually wear as many as possible because of the value that Asho has and because of the metaphor that links Asho to children. We talk about Onigba Asho, the one with the 200 pieces of clothing. You know how many that would be. You know, the number 200 plus the one, of course, which is always wonderful for us. So with your permission, I can clothe myself and with your permission too, so that the show might begin. <laughs> <laughs> to guide us. I bring you greetings from Ududua Temoro, the one who descended on the mystic chain to create Ile in Ile Ife. Greetings from Esulagu, Onili Orita, the one that habits the gatekeeper of Ilare, may he continue to open our paths. Greetings from Ife Alashe, the wizard of Okitashe. He is the one that makes night to become day and day to become night. That is why it is only in Oketashe that you find that which the professor was talking about, that thing that is mirrorish that you see on the floor. 
We call it Idonodona for you just in the looking facet. That is, that Idonodona, that uh, mirrorish something, and the powers of mirror we have heard about it today. May Ifa continue to open our paths. And to my mother, may she continue to clothe us with her beauty, with her fertility, and with her love. So let us talk about Tombamento. I started by connecting the two bridges because that has always been my project to, to, to build another bridge, not the bridge of the slave ship, yeah. not the bridge of suffering that brought our people from Africa to the new world, but now a bridge of faith, a bridge of identity, a bridge of love. And that bridge, I started uh, giving it a name in 2001, and I called it Yorubayanidad. <laughs> Yorubayanidad. On the one hand, you have your Yoruba, and on the other, you have your Bahia. You know Bahia. Bahia is uh, actually on both sides. Bahia tends uh, to have so many meanings that we can't even begin to, to discuss them. And of course, that's what we all represent here. That identity of the African that crossed the oceans, that did not get lost in the process, but that continued to expand, to reformulate itself, to reinvent itself, and to continue to be the same old. You know that uh, myth, the Pataki, of uh, Eshu, where Eshu, each time multiplies himself and continues and continues like that. That is the idea that Yoruba and this African identity in diaspora portrays. And of course, we talk about Candomblé. Candomblé has been given so many translations in uh, different, uh, by different people. And uh, usually, my point of contention is usually, when they want to talk about us, about our people in the diaspora, and uh, the, the white academy would always want to remind us of that slavery. So they always say, uh, kind of was region of the slaves, uh, kind of was brought by slaves. I would say no. That our people, we are never slaves. We are enslaved. Like the difference. Nobody was born a slave. They were enslaved. They were no slaves. So, and that is why when they now say, oh, Candomblé uh, translates to the dance of the slaves, I say, there you are wrong again. <laughs> there you are wrong again. When, although in Yoruba we say, be that when we are crying, we do see. But then, no slave, when he manages to get out of that enslaved moment, would want to be reminded of that position again. So when the, the Candomblé itself, becomes the code of the African to recover their personality, their identity, their collective memory, their future, their destiny, and their faith. And so in Yoruba, the, the candomblé, if you listen to the rhythm, candomblé, was actually a code used among the enslaved in old Bahia then to talk about their religion without having to incur the wrath of those who thought they held the day. And so, in Yoruba we say, Asoti Oroni Jekini Anonko. That is, it is uh, because the two of us share a secret that I can say, can you give me that thing? Nobody else will know what that, in, that thing is. That is Inka thing. Inka Tombe, that thing that is, that exists. The secret, the power they are shared that they brought, that the others did not know about. That is candomblé for me. And now let's talk about tombamento. Um, candomblé itself was born, like I said, in that secrecy. There is a place in Bahia that is called Bahokinya. Bahokinya is a place where you still have a big Catholic church till today. And uh, historians tell us that candomblé was born in that we, in the backyard of that church, where there was, guess what? An old Iroko tree that has this hollowed inside. Do you remember what that other person uh, spoke about hollowed spots? Mm -hmm. That was the very first hush harbor of the Yorubas 
in Bahia because right here in the yard of the church, they were able to have their share in the hollow of that uh, sacred tree. And for years and years, it continued there until the Orisha itself decided to get to its first place. And that was when the place became a Tejero. So they moved from there, they went to where you know today as Vasco da Gama. And that is where you have the Tejero da Casablanca. And of course, the presence, the movement the, of the Asher of the Orisha automatically transformed that space into a sacred territory for the Africans, for, um, for all their descendants until today. At times it gets uh, funny when uh, in the reductionist uh, imagery, they, 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 they try to uh, replace the African name of that original temple that is Ile Ashe Yana Soka. The Yana So, you know, that emblem, the most powerful woman in the Oyo Empire that uh, takes care of the Shango cult. Now everybody just calls it the Casablanca. So, well, it's, it's not really a very pretty uh, association, but then. Uh, that's that's uh, something for uh, about aliases for you. So now, this uh, our story revolves around that first foundation, that first creation of the terreiro of the African sacred territory born on diasporic land, and for hundreds of, of years that territory continued to exist. Oshun came. You see the Baku of Oshun right at the entrance with the waters that came nobody knew from where and the waters will pass through to go onto the hills of Obatala and to enter the temple of Shango and you will meet all the Orishas there under the banner of Oshosi and Shango. But then when Brazil became modern you all knew what happened. They wanted to eradicate everything that had to do with slavery, the original crime and also with the contribution of the black man. And of course, the, one of the, 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 the pathways leading them to that was to dispossess the blacks of the identity of the, 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 the monuments that they have been able to construct. So the Tejero, this sacred territory of Casablanca, Iliache, Iyana Soka, became a disputed territory. The landlord, wanted to uh, eject the cult uh, territory to, to send away the Orisha people so that he could sell it to the highest bidder to build the uh, skyscraper and what have you on sacred land. Somebody said something very interesting when he said, when you are playing with possession, never think of dispossessing our yas, the Orishas of the water. Uh, a friend of mine said, uh, when the guy who built Titanic decided to take it to sea, he forgot to take permission from Yemaja. And we all know the rest of the story. So the same thing happened to them. The same thing happened to them. You know, they wanted to build their beautiful uh, story buildings, skyscrapers to make money on Oshun territory, and then trouble stock. And at the end of the day, Thank goodness they were sensible people even in their government. They were forced to see that there is a power beyond the powers that they recognized that was guiding that place. So they had to ask for tombamento, that is transforming the uh, patrimony into a heritage, a cultural heritage of the Brazilian nation so that it would be free from such uh, whatever speculations and all the rest. But in doing such a, something that they thought was just simple, considering something simple to uh, Candomblé, they were actually creating a chain event that would eventually lead to the transformation of the, the image of the black himself, first within himself in, in Brazil, and then in the eyes of the other side, the, the white folks, the elites, and the entire Brazilian nation, because the dialogue has always been imperfect, always one-sided, that you know they, they were always looked down upon, they were the ones that brought uh, the bad image to Brazil and all the rest. And so because of this, we uh, have the blacks now asking for, now we have our territory, it is recognized, 
It is a sacred uh, community for us, and nobody can take it away. How about now letting us use this from this community, tell our story our own way? So you have laws that, after decades of uh, disputes, came into being. One was the 10,639 uh, decree of 2003, which made it mandatory the inclusion of the teaching of African history and culture in Brazilian schools, something that had not been happening since that nation was founded. And it was, and it was followed uh, by another law in 2007, that was the law 11,000, uh, 635 of 2007, which uh, made the 21st of January as the national day of fight against religious intolerance. Because the, the creation of space, sacred spaces, if you, anybody who knows Salvador will understand this idea of sacred spaces. Because even houses, tenement houses built for profit, Orisha claimed them. So you have Edificio Shorsi, Edificio Yemoja, uh, Edificio uh, Ibu Alamo, and so on and so forth. Not to talk of the te of the Diki Dr. Horo, we are the Orishas, we are actually having a complete watery temple. So this, uh, of course, this one brought problems from other religious, especially the uh, Pentecostals, and so the significance of this law that became a victory of the blacks in Bahia. And of course, this would lead to more sacred territories being recognized under the same tombamento economy for the blacks. Of course, uh, well, I'll skip this part. I'll, so, of the today, between that 2000 and uh, between that uh, 1986 and the and the year 2010, we now have five principal. Uh, Orisha temples in Bahia and in Brazil as a whole that are now recognized as sacred temples and patrimony of Brazilian uh, nationality, making it possible for them to stand side by side with the Catholic religion and any other recognized religion in Brazil, which was not a mean victory for the black people. And so you have the Ilya Shegana Tuoka, the Casa Blanca that started, the Terreiro do Guantua, the Ilya Shokwa Fonja, the Terreiro do Alake to the Opo Adonju, and the Kere Bantam, the Zoma Adonu, which was the only one, and continues to be, the only one that belongs to the JG Daomi tradition in, in Brazil to today. And of course you have uh, the uh, Terreiro do Pai Adam Ilya Obagunte in Recife that also uh, belongs to this uh, culture. And one thing that I want to bring out here I, uh, is the image itself of the representation, the blending, the negotiation that went on to, to, to create this, this new image, this new status, if we must uh, say that, of uh, Afro-Brazilianity that this tombamento economy brought about. In here, I don't know if this uh, marker will show on the but okay. So here you have the then Minister of Culture himself, uh, some of us may know him, Gilberto Gil, who is a very famous, accomplished uh, musician himself, and he is here uh, giving the government a uh, verdict to the tombamento of uh, Alaketu. And uh, this is a, a temple that, was, that has been in existence uh, since uh, 18, no, 1636, if I can see very well the dates that we have there, but it was only in 2005 that it is being recognized officially by the Brazilian government as having contributed to the identity, to the world, to the spirituality of uh, Brazil. And so, Gilberto Gil himself, the minister, coming already in the in the in the image of Shango, which is here, well plated, and he actually made, made a discourse there. He said, if he was at that moment, a minister of culture in Brazil, he considered himself representing more Shango because before he was a minister of the Brazilian government, Shango had made him a minister in Ilia Shokwa Fonja. So he was there to make that connection for them so that they would understand that he came from very, very far away, that his tradition was not a tradition that, came, that was born yesterday. So the Iyaz are there, we continue to ask for their blessing, and of course, we have the others that follow them. So the, the 
uh, lesson that we can learn from this is the idea of the universalization of the Yoruba religion that was born only when the black discovered himself not as a slave but as, as an enslaved person who needed to now reimage and prove to them that he was a prince, he was a, he was a priest, and he was a sage in his homeland. And that is Baba himself, or Batala, Bababa, who, who is there with the bastion of authority to tell the world that the African could not have been a slave if he were already a king. I thank you so much.